Okay, uh, I will be explaining Billard software. It's a project that I've been working uh, for a quite long time. And uh, I think it uh, deserves a in-depth explanation video. So uh, it's a, from the name, as you can guess, it's a Billard venue software for Billard venues to manage their tables. So people can start games, end games, pause their games and pay for their games. And also if a, uh, the venue has physical products, it can be used as a kiosk as well. And uh, that's, prob that's the, the majority of the features uh, it has. Uh, right now it has a web UI, as you can see here. It's uh, built with a view tree. And uh, we have a backend to handle the REST API requests, uh, which is written in Golang. And to store our data, we have a database, MySQL database. And um, that's the technical side of it. I am planning to write a uh, mobile app in the future. So it has a REST API, so it will be easy to connect a, a mobile app for that. And uh, to see what it does, we can just log into the demo with uh, our admin user. And when we log in, uh, we are welcomed for, uh, to this page. And this is the page uh, where the majority of the time spent for users. Uh, in this page, users, admins, anyone uh, can see the tables available uh, in the venue. So for this demo, we have four tables and uh, admin can name those tables whatever you, uh, he wants so i just named them uh, table one table two table three and table four so those tables are clickable so when you click on the table uh, you can see the details of the table and depending on the on your role you can do some actions like i am admin i can join the table uh, right now and uh, for the roles, we have uh, four different roles right now. Uh, first one is admin, which is the user I am logged in. Uh, the second one is the user, default user, which is uh, you know the players that uh, has accounts. And uh, the other one is uh, the tablet user, which is for the guest users. Uh, in reality, we have a tablet or a computer set it up uh, in the venue. So people without accounts or technological devices, they can just uh, type their guest name and start joining the tables. And also they can pay for the uh, physical products they bought from these tablets. Also, we have another uh, user, which is kiosk user. It is only purpose is to serve as a kiosk. Uh, so it is uh, installed nearly to the um, minibar or whatever you call it and uh, users can pick items at it to their cards and proceed to the payment also if you have an account as a user you can also pay the physical products uh, payments on your phone as well so right now we only have a web user web user interface so it is responsive to uh, handle mobile uh, users as well. So you just only need to log into uh, Venue's website. That will be enough to starting. And um, what else we have is the shop screen. So there the products are listed. Right now we only have one product. And when you click on the product, you add it to your cart. You can add more, you can delete. That works like that. You can empty your card as well. When you click complete, you will be proceeded to the payment screen, depending on your role. So you can pay and get the products you want. And we have a uh, notifications screen to uh, show user notifications. And uh, also admins can create uh, announcements and those announcements will come to users as a notification. And we have profile screen. Uh, it has several options. You know, you you also have subscriptions here, and the subscriptions are for you know um, each table 
has a uh, pricing and uh, this pricing depends on the player count on that table and your role uh, and also your subscription so if you have a subscription you can just play uh, the game for free without paying uh, you just need to buy a subscription it can be monthly or uh, yearly or you can just set it up you know if you want a daily subscription you can create it as a as well as admin and uh, it affects the pricing and usually it makes uh, users prices free but uh, you can use subscriptions as a discounting method so you know if you have a subscription it will be a lot cheaper you can do that uh, so you can manage your subscriptions here uh, for this demo we have two subscriptions you can buy that it takes you to payment screen uh, we have waiting orders so if you try to buy something but did not complete it uh, you can see it here we have order history you know uh, when we bought something we can see it as a history here we can change our passwords and we can log out uh, th that's it for the user interface stuff uh, also we have uh, admin specific dashboard so to manage all the stuff when we go to the admin screen uh, admin dashboard welcomes us and uh, right here we can publish a notification and it will be sent to all users as a notification we can see the active games so you know when we join the table it creates a new game and uh, admin can see all the active games and also see uh, active orders as well so you know when i initiated an order uh, but did not completed it it will be here we have reporting feature to um track what products are bought uh, you know the subscriptions users games and all the uh, data stuff we have users to manage our users uh, you know i can uh, see the details of the user see the name surname email phone role and i can see the users uh, subscription also i am working on a feature to add a uh, subscription to each user so they don't have to buy it if we want to gift them you can also see their uh, previous orders here and uh, it has a filtering so you know you want to search for a specific user you can do that as well uh, we have roles we have admin user kiosk and guest device which is the tablet that i mentioned you have tables you can create new table you can edit table here and um, we have products and uh, as you may notice we have change order which means uh, we can change the order of the products so in uh, when we do that it changes the orders of the items listed in the kiosk screen so if i create a new product called uh, test product 2 and give it a price like 50 and uh, we can just oh we got our first pack here so when i try to change the order it's the uh, the the dozen uh, request to the server hmm it thinks the product is already on the top so there is a little bug going on uh but overall you can you should be able to change the order of the product so and you can also change the details of the product you can add image change the price and you can see the orders uh, all the orders here you can filter them from their dates and their methods yeah uh, this demo set it up for a specific uh, 
venue so it's based on Norway and uh, they are using VIPS as a payment provider also they support physical payment which means uh, if a user provided cash or credit card it counts as a physical and uh, all the confirmation and validation handled by uh, the venue itself uh, the software just waiting a uh, accept or decline um, events from the user also we have system which means um, if it's free and users did not pay it it's still counted as order but paid by the system because it's free and also for this stuff we have a system method and we can see the subscriptions and their prices and uh, as I mentioned we have two different subscriptions right now which is monthly and yearly so if you ask what is KR means uh, which is Kron in uh, it's a currency Norway uses so that's why we have KR here and uh, for example we have games games that played here yeah from the admin panel you can manage your system so as i said we created a notification and i can see it on my notifications so it's hello and uh, it has a date and time and i can just read it and it will be gone okay so let's try to join a table so we have actions so i come to the table 2 and click join game I am joining as a um, admin so I don't need to pick a user because my user is known and uh, it's created that it has a counter timer counter which has seconds minutes and hours to track your playtime and uh, on the right hand you have your price predicted price it is uh, doing a calculation to calculate your price so when you you will have an idea what amount you're gonna pay on the checkout and the, this pricing uh, is super um, complex to calculate because it has a lot of parameters like how many users on the game and uh, also how many active users and uh, and also it affects uh, pricing with your role if you have subscription it will be free if you're not you're gonna pay and uh, it has a lot of calculations going on in the back so as I remember I just sent uh, a price uh, no we, we calculating it uh, on each request which is not ideal but uh, the venue I am working with right now it's uh, requested that so we just added it but probably there will be a more efficient way to handle it but also we the, the software is written in Golang so it has a super speed uh, improvements going on so it's not a it's not creating a uh, huge problem on this scale and there is a another bug oh no there's no bug uh, I joined the table so it tells me you know you're playing at table 2 okay uh, let's sign out and uh, join as a tablet so I can create guest users mm. wait a minute do we have that user we have validation issues going on uh, the guest device which is using guest not tablet okay now I logged in as a tablet user or the guest tablet, whatever you call it uh, and as you may notice we don't have a profile and we can only access the home and shop pages and for example if I go to the table 2 I can join a game as a guest but it requires me to give it a name call it Burkai and join game so it it is adding a guest and dash uh, string before the name you provided 
with that users can understand this user is a guest and uh, yeah it all it also has its own uh, counter for time and price and uh, we can pause users game when I uh, joined with the tablet user um, I have an option to select all the guests but I can't select uh, accounts I can just select the guest so I select that when I click pause it redirects me to the home page because these tablets are being used by a lot of people so usually we have to take it back to the uh, home page and when the user is paused uh, it has a um, this red animation going on and its counter is stopped but the other players uh, continue to play the game and the calculation uh, calculates that as well and you can unpause your user so it continues to play yep and you can change your table uh, you know I'm playing a table 2 but I decided to go to the table 4 because my friends playing there just click transfer and my user is uh, transferred there my price uh, is kept so you know if I have to pay one Crone, uh, it is transferred to this table as well. But only thing that is not uh, transferred is the my playtime. It's only stored in the backend, so users are only seeing the current time, current playtime of the user. And yeah, also uh, you can leave your table as well. When I leave my game, uh, it redirects me to this payment overview page. And uh, the cool thing is, uh, for example, it says 2.15 kron is a price, but my user is not paused or is not left the game. So it's counted as still playing. So when I proceed to payment, system will really recalculate the price and it will update this. So there's a reason why we have this uh, warning here. If I go to the proceed to payments, it will take me, it should take me to payment screen, but it gives me an error. At first we are doing a payment initialization, but it gives us internet server. I don't know what's going on here. Probably because uh, yeah, it is uh, trying to initialize a uh, VIPs payment. Something going on bad here, so I am not sure what's going on. Uh, to log out as a uh, tablet, we have to go to the slash profile. And I will go log in as admin. And admins has a cool feature they can leave their game and they don't need to pay with VIPs they can pay with physical cards option which is the uh, what I mentioned before uh, it's a it's uh, validated by the venue so you know it's a, just a option to accept or go back for this reason I'm a authorized person so I can just accept my payments and my user will be left the table and uh, my order will be complete and we have as you may see we have one active game going on which is the game that we are playing at table 4 with the guests user we can enter the player's game uh, it will redirect uh, it will create an order for that guest to pay we can pause the player we can kick the player which does not require payment from them and we have um, active orders, which is the order that we try to initiate, but did not successfully done it. And as you may see, we have a history, so we can see, you know, we try to initialize uh, VIPs. But it does not have a state like, is it successful or not? And we can apply discounts. Uh, for example, it is 363, right? And I want to apply a discount for one. And it's applied a discount here. And uh, it's lowered the price. Yeah. 
the VIPS uh, is working in production, but I'm not sure why it's not working in the development. So, and uh, the VIPS is uh, has a test API, so we are using it in the development. Also, I am planning to separate it, you know, with that I can add PayPal Stripe as a payment method as well, uh, if it's required on a situation. And that's why I recorded this video. So I am thinking to uh, make this project open source so people can use it and sell it for venues and uh, do their own plugins, do their own implementations, you know. And yeah, so maybe we can see some of the code because we see so much features here. Uh, I am right now storing those uh, API and web as a separate repository, but probably will move them into one repository. Uh, so our UI is written in a uh, view and I'm not super fluent at Vue, just started using it and kind of like that. We have lots of pages. We have services which are managing our connection between the backend and we have router. I am thinking to add a another language. So that's why we have locals folder to store our uh, keywords. We have components and we have assets going on. And there's nothing special going on here. So we have just CSS, plain CSS. There's no tailwind as I remember if I didn't edit. Yeah. Those are all handwritten. If you want, you can add tailwind. For example, uh, we have a API service which manages all the API uh, requests and it's a function and all the services using this function to communicate with the server. For example, we have user service, which uh, imports the API that I said, and um, it's just a function, a asynchronous function, and it's, uh, for example, to return all the users, we have this function, and uh, we have those stuff probably the uh, yeah we have pagination going on so that's why we have page and parameter and for the user it's uh, for the filtration as i remember you know if you want to filter the user it will only return that user so that's why we have this parameter here and it's uh, just you know stores the response from the api we are doing a get request, the string is the URL. And uh, yeah, for the API path, uh, we have an env file to store our API URL. And I also edit, but not using it. Uh, we have currency parameter as well for white. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, you, if you are familiar with the view, it has a, it's uses white. So and the white requires to have white keyword on the env. So that's why we have them here. Uh, yeah, for for the web, that's all. It's, you know, all the calculations are handled on the backend. So we have not much uh, fancy stuff going on here. If we go to the API, um, it's a Golang project that I tried to learn Golang and implement it. So if you are professional at Golang, you will notice that. <laughs> um, we have packages. I try to separate them as a package. Mm but still have some controls going on here, some window layers. We are using JWT for uh, tokens. 
and I try to use Bravo, formerly Sand, no, not Sandgrid. Sandgrid, oh, I don't remember. Uh, we are using Bravo for the males because it has a, a really good free plan. 300 uh, uh, male sands a day, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. We have our models, for example, we have game model, which is using Gorm. Uh, and for the HTTP stuff, we are using a gin. I have a lot of consts types here going on. Yeah. We have two middlewares, which is one is auth middleware, middleware to determine is the user authorized or not. And we have course uh, because it's working on the development fine, but when we deploy it to production, there are course issues happening, just like all other technologies you use. Um, that's why we have it here. We have roots going on. And on the packages, I try to store handlers and routers as I remember yeah and um, our migrations handled by Gorm as well so in the main that go file you may notice no sorry um, we have database file and inside that we are, we have a auto migrate for all the models and we have connect database function. And uh, here we have two commented out commands, which uh, first one is drop tables, dropping all the tables and we have seed to seed uh, the database with our defined values, which is here, it's a function. It has all the required basic uh, values. For example, uh, user roles, role configuration. So each role has a configuration and uh, defines the first users. And this hash means a password. So all the default users has a password. We have user roles, we are attaching ro uh, roles to the users, these uh, roles. We have tables, we have products, we have subscriptions, and also we have pricing, you know, uh, if it's just c controlling that, you know, if the role ID this, and if the player count is this, uh, for the per minute, you get that. And if you have subscription, you get that. If it's just a hard code thing. And with that, uh, admin can define his own pricing. Yeah. And I did not show it yet, probably. So let me show you. Yeah, hey, we have pricing uh, many, sorry, page here. And, you know, we have roles, a subscription, player count, and per minute. So, what, how it works is. Um, we are looking for the roles, you know, is the user role is user. Okay. Then we just ignore this stuff. And uh, we are looking, you know, is the subscription of this user is yearly. Okay. We only looking for these four rows. And uh, what is the player count? If it's four, the permanent is zero. And our user is subscribed. So all the subscribed users paying nothing. So the permanent is zero. And uh, if we have a user, it does not have subscription. We're just looking the player count. For example, if three, it's calculated there. And those prices are uh, defined by the venue. So you can just give them whatever you want. And no role means uh, guest users. They have no defined role and they are not counted as users. So we are not storing them as a user. Otherwise, we have to 
constantly check them and delete them to save space because there are a lot of guest users going on and uh, guest users cannot have subscription and that's it and the calculation stuff going on uh, is here I want to show that because I spend a lot of time building that uh, I think it's on the game module Uh, so I am not sure where is that code lying uh, oh yeah basically we what we are doing is uh, we are storing each uh, table action as a chunk so what it means you know when somebody joins a table we create a chunk row in the database so it's there we have game user chunks I guess yeah um, <clears throat> in the chunk we are storing the game ID and game user ID which is different than user by the way and we have price status and players so when some action happens you know somebody leaves somebody pauses somebody joins we're just pausing the time storing everything uh, before that action happens so you know before joining the user we're just taking a snapshot and how many users on the table what are users prices and what are their statuses are they paused or playing and then you're creating a new snapshot with empty values and then when the next action happens you're just filling it uh, so what it gives us is a, a performance improvement so we don't have to constantly a do mathematical calculations to determine the time zone the chunks programmatically so we just can look at the database and get the chunk information um, yeah that's how it works and it's implemented some there it's just <laughs> split it around to all the code base and we can just calculate each chunk or the total of it so when we do a payment we are calculating we are summing up all the chunk prices so it will give us a um, final price to pay yeah that's generally what billet software is And I think I explained all the major features. So yeah, the, as I said, I am thinking to make it open source. And when I done that, I will be sharing um, GitHub repository. And uh, if I had the time, I will write a simple documentation so you can get around and deploy it on your own. Uh, so thank you.